die Dorrington Court. Englisch, 5.821 Tonnen. Koordinaten und Zeitpunkt stimmen ganz genau. Erstaunlich. Wie bekommt er bloß seine Informationen? Wer immer er sein mag, er muss ein Genie sein. Rohr 1 und 2, Klammer. Rohr 1 und 2, Klammer. Rohr 1. Los, los, los. Get out of the way. I hope we don't miss the news. No, you won't miss the news. You all right? For God's sake, slow down, Bill. You're a maniac. We're late. To hell with that. I'm only having a drink. I'd like to be alive to enjoy it. <laughs> Commanding officers just tried to kill me. <laughs> Man's a maniac. Shut up. Here is the news read by Alvar Liddell. An official announcement from Washington about two hours ago. I think we can afford a new The Americans video. have made landings at Algiers and Oran. Hey! On the Mediterranean hey! coast of Central Africa. Hey! 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 That'll take the pressure off back home. Well, they've promised a second the front long enough. The Canada Canada is forced during the night. They were made with British naval and air support. Hey! Many divisions of the British Army are on their way to reinforce them. The Supreme Commander is General Eisenhower. I could send you on that, Lord. Some drink, sir. I didn't see you sitting up here. Oh, Lewis, I haven't seen you for weeks. Where have you been? Oh, Another hush hush scheme, attempting to produce petrol from cow manure. Does it sound <laughs> promising? We get our best results from sacred cows. <laughs> oh, I think that SOE. Splendid nearly every night, an electrifying bridge game. Oh, my good God. old top secret Colonel Pew. You're lucky you're in uniform. I'm just a bloody tea planter. What's tea got to do with the war? I'm told it's good for morale. SOE, Special Operations Executive. What the devil do you chaps do? Odd jobs. Come on. All right. Unusual operations. <laughs> you sound like a ruddy abortionist. <laughs> Not a bad description. Well, I see you're having lunch, so I'll trot along. God bless you, sir. Hope so. Thanks for the drink, Bill. And don't offer me another lift, ever. Fred, <laughs> don't you owe me a drink. What's that all about? Well, I scared the hell out of him by driving too fast. My own frustration, I suppose. I'm just as envious of you as he is, you know. Being the managing director of a chemical plant is not exactly my idea of a glorious contribution to the law. What would you like me to say? You've been classified essential where you are. If you want to consider me lucky to be doing what I'm doing, well, go ahead. When I think what happened to your wife and your daughter in Coventry... Well, come off. Bill? Oh, I'm sorry, Lewis. I didn't mean to open up old wounds. Well, you do have some opportunity for revenge. Oh, good God. If I have to kill some poor devils, it's not revenge. It doesn't really diminish my anger or my grief. Not one bit. Now, what do you say we try to have a pleasant lunch? No, I'm sorry, Liz. How's Doris? Oh, she's fine. She's fine. Louis, if you should ever hear of a job that's so odd that nobody else would want to get involved in it, do think of the Calcutta light horse. Well, it's not very likely. No, I know. We're all civilians these days, and we're a little thin on top and thick in the middle, but I guarantee you, every one of those fellows would pull his own weight. <laughs> That's not an intentional joke. 
You will remember it, won't you, just in case? I shan't forget. Sir, by tomorrow night, Force 136 should be behind Japanese lines in Burma, blowing up various little items. Good. All right, let's get down to new business. I see you've been studying the Admiralty's urgent request. Astonishing. 46 freighters sunk by German submarines in the Indian Ocean in the past month. You boats know exactly where and when to strike. Incredibly accurate information, etc., etc. Radio monitoring finally managed to home in on a powerful transmitter 400 miles south of Bombay just last night. What do you suppose took them so long, sir? Oh, no, that's not the reason why. Well, here we go, Gavin. Off to blow up a transmitter. Not exactly. And the bloody thing's not in India proper. It's in Goa, damn it. Somewhere in the Marmagoa Harbor. Neutral territory. Portuguese colony. That's a bit tricky. Naturally. Also, our people haven't been able to break the code. If radio monitoring are right, and the transmitter is actually in the harbor, then it must be on a ship. You don't suppose that it could be on one of the three German freighters in turn there? But the Portuguese authorities dismantled those ships' radios when they gave them permission to stay there. Yes, but how do we know that one of them doesn't have another transmitter hidden somewhere aboard? We don't. And here we are with the strictest orders never to violate Portugal's neutrality. Well, then what do you suggest we do about it, sir? Well, you can sit here and froth at the mouth. Or we can try and find out where all that information that's transmitted to those U-boats originates. I have a suggestion, sir. Gavin and I could spend a day or two in Goa poking about, see what we can dig up. Dig up or pick up? Oh, he uh, speaks for himself, sir. I speak for myself. Yes, well, I was speaking for you. Yes, all right, I suppose this is top priority. Go ahead and dig. One has the transmitter. Exactly. Sit down, Manuel. You look like your feet hurt. The Germans outside, which ship are they from? The Ehrenfels. Captain Rofer. Very charming gentleman, actually. Mm, no doubt, no doubt. Well, what's been happening? Nothing, just the usual. Usual what? People coming and going, eating and drinking. Everything normal. How's the uh, <clears throat> gambling, Manuel? A little slow. And naturally, the police keep asking for more and more. Oh, that's too bad. 
Let's get to the point, Manuel. My friend here has a nice fat packet of mosquitoes to lose on your wheel. Personally, I would wish for him to win. Manuel. How much are we talking about? All of it. And then I commit suicide right on your doorstep. <laughs> By the same token, I could give it to you here right now. No, no, senor, no. Maybe it would be more fun to lose it bit by bit. What do you think? Yes, senor. Meanwhile, you and I will be having a pleasant little chat in your private office. Please. I'll be one minute. Les jeux sont faits, rien n'est retenu. No more bets, ladies and gentlemen. Et bonjour, monsieur, dame. Thank you. Mais bonjour, monsieur, dame. Ladies and gentlemen, place your bets. Good luck. No more bets. It's bad luck to say that. Oh, instantly retracted. 34, rouge, père et face. 34, red and even. Must be the instant retraction. Or maybe it was the good luck to begin with. Or how about plain destiny? Bonjour, madame, monsieur. Ladies and gentlemen, place your bets. I think I'll try that again. Good luck. No more bets. I hope so. How about celebrating my impending loss with a bottle of champagne? Thank you. I don't drink when I gamble. Smoke? <laughs> Tap dance? Not recently. Well, how about tea in the lounge? You do hear those little clicking sounds. Uh, 31. Noir et impasse. 31. Black and odd. By the way, my name is Gavin Stewart. I take it that that is a wedding ring. That's what it is. And you are Mrs... Cromwell. Let me hazard a guess, Mrs. Cromwell. You are here in Goa on holiday, and your husband is an acutely large gentleman probably sitting at the back of our table. No, I live here, and my husband is dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I tend to be... Overcharming? I really am sorry. There's no need to be. Let's watch our money disappear. No more bets. Manuel, you're not thinking hard enough. I'm doing my best. Well, let's try again. We're talking about Indians who visit your outdoor cafe frequently. Yes, quite a few. I said so. It's a very popular and place. And we're talking about someone else. Probably a German who might just pass by at the same time every day. It's not something or I know. who might drop in for a few minutes. Or who might be followed down the street by one of the Indians. Look. I'd really like to help you, but I don't notice these things. I'm too busy in the place. Manuel, listen. Whatever you pay the police to let you keep the gambling going, I can double it to have them shut you down. So take a bit of friendly advice. I want you to notice these things. Bonjour, Monsieur Dan. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Bet oh. bonjour, Monsieur Dan. You really have faith. Hope would be a better word. Would you mind if I asked what you're doing in Goa? Losing. But with incredible grace. Oh, actually, I am here on business just for the day. I have to be back in Bombay tomorrow night. It may sound quaint, but I sell tea. 22, noir, veritas, 22, black and even. Oh, huh? that does it. You've lost quite a lot, I'm sorry. Oh, the way I look at it, I won. I met you. And I would like to meet you again. Perhaps you will. On your next trip. I'll be here. Wait, bonjour. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Senor, I'm very frightened. Manuel, I promised you that no one will ever know you've said anything at all. You don't even know their names. All you know is that an Indian with a mole on his cheek and a 
at all European, may be communicating with each other. Or they may not. Exactly. Lewis, we have a long drive. Signor, the gambling? Strictly between you and the police. Mrs. Cromwell, may I be of some assistance? Manuel, I've been really lucky. I'm taking home a lot of your money. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Well, you probably know I'll come back and lose it all, but just now I feel marvelous. Manuel, I'd like to give you a little something. Oh, no, I couldn't accept. Why not? Of course you could. Oh, but uh, I never tip you when you lose. <laughs> Manuel, I insist. Look, damn it, we've got to get rid of that transmitter. Do you know how many lives depend on supplies that are lying at the bottom of the Indian Ocean? I think we do, sir, but we still don't know exactly where it is. I think our first priority is to find whoever heads the spy ring. And how do you propose to handle that? The lead you picked up in Goa is rather fragile. I'm not so sure. We know that the man who gave it to us was murdered. It's worth following up. And just suppose you discover who the head spy is, then what? Gavin and I kidnap him and interrogate him rather thoroughly. In Goa? Right, if that's where he is. Granted, there's a risk of being caught in neutral territory. We can always plead insanity, sir. But he speaks for himself. Then do it. But it dislikes me. If you two are caught, God knows what trouble we'll be in. It's all right. Go ahead and make plans. Thank you, sir. Watch it, Gavin. Why not? Helen, get me 641 and go. Yes? Compliments of the management. That's what I call Portuguese hospitality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome to God. Thank you. That was fast. Well, the truth is, Mackenzie has a telephone built into his wooden leg. What does it say? Possible your man is Ram Dasgupta, Indian, about 32, large mole on right cheek, clerk for Inter Europe shipping Bombay, currently living. At 197 Cabral Street, Goa. Known political activist for Indian independence. I think we should meet this fellow. That means right now. Someone here named Ram Dasgupta. Senor. This call is from Mr. Ram Dasgupta. Perhaps he's outside. Senor Ram Dasgupta. Yes. Telephone.
Now listen very carefully. Your name is Ron Dustgupta. You live at 197 Cabral Street. You work at Inter-Europe Shipping. Unless you fully cooperate, we'll be delighted to kill you. Is that understood? Listen to this, Lewis. The Ennismore Trader, 6,212 tons, cargo varied, including tank and plane ammo, approximate latitude 1025, longitude 7415. January 27th, between 0800 and 2100 hours. That's one we saved. You are a naughty boy. Now, we'd like you to go back to your table and continue with your usual routine. We'll be watching the tiniest false move and you're dead. number one agent in Southern Asia. Are you sure? I'm sure. Strong coffee upset your stomach? No. A pity. If you don't keep your mouth shut, our next meeting may not be this friendly. Mrs. Cornwall! Hello. Oh, words to that effect? Hello. What a coincidence. I've uh, been sitting over there waiting for you. No, you haven't. Well, I cannot tell a lie. To tell you the truth, I'm waiting for a business associate who's never been on time in his life. By the way, it's Gavin. I remember. Do I still call you Mrs. Cromwell? Oh, no, wait, don't answer that. What's your dog's name? You won't laugh. Guaranteed. Hamlet. But it's not a great day. He doesn't know that. And you may not believe this, but they named me Agnes. I'm still not laughing, Agnes. There I was, a helpless infant. Oh, coffee, please. And a human arm with the dog, please. Pardon, sir. Just a coffee. You were saying a helpless infant. May I say how spectacularly you have matured. But first, is it all right if I continue to call you Mrs. Cromwell? That is the best idea I've heard all day. It's still early, Mrs. Cromwell.
I really must leave. The beast needs the exercise. Don't forget, we still have that date. Thanks for the coffee. Have a lovely walk, Mrs. Cromwell. Fast work. Well, a man does not live by bread alone. A man who loves dogs can't be all bad. Come along. I have some news for you. There, those two men. So we pay the bill and then wait outside Trumpetter's house. Right. Could wait there the rest of the day and the night too. Don't you think the car will look a trifle conspicuous? Well, I suppose it might. But we can't just break into his house and take him. We could. Except we don't know who else might be there. I don't like the idea of Gupta running about loose. I mean, he knows we're not in tea. All right. We'll pick up Mr. Trumpetter in the morning. Well, in that event, Lewis, I uh, have a small favor to ask. There's no need to look at me like that. You know my country comes first. You'd like me to take a long, invigorating walk tonight? Well, you could sit in the bar. The walk will do me more good. for my cigarette. <laughs> 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 It's not worth a rupee. Nevertheless, I will also shoot the lady. Captain! You killed him. Yes. He was about to kill me. And you, that sort of thing tends to make me impulsive. Did you know him? No. It was a nice throw, thank you.
good God, who's that? Well, it's uh, a little complicated. Where did you get the pistol? From him. Well, that is just perfect. We have an appointment tomorrow with the Imperial Tea Company, not with the bloody police. And what was I supposed to do, Louis? Let him kill us? As you've probably gathered, this is my boss. Louis. How do you do? A little civility wouldn't be out of place, would it? I mean, it wasn't her fault. I want to go now. I'll take you. No, thanks. I didn't mean to sound rude. You must be very upset. Upset? Why would I be upset? I mean, it was just a simple murder. I promise you, you won't be involved with the police. That is, unless you wish to involve yourself. And go. That's all I need. No, this is strictly your problem. If it comes to it, I'll deny I was even here. As you wish. Good night. Did you really have to kill him? I mean, we could have worked on him. Perhaps learned something about Trompetta. Honestly, Louis, I really had no choice. What happened to you? Two very pleasant chaps tried to kill me at the dock. Did they? Maybe we should have both sat in the bar. Where are they now? They're resting. What do we do with him? As Mackenzie said, when in trouble, call room service. Could I trouble you for a match? I don't smoke. Now, would you please look at the white car over there? I think you might find it interesting. If he has to kill you here and now, he will. Let you and I get into the car very quietly. longer much point in delivering him to intelligence. Let's dump him here. No. Wait till we cross the border. Can't have him found in Goa. Identification, Mr. Ford. Hmm? Your papers, gentlemen. I guess, of course. Turned out nice again, hasn't it? Thank you. And that, gentlemen? Here it is. I'm sure you'll find everything in order. Perfectly, sir. Have a good trip, gentlemen.
You got away with killing Trompetter and a fat lot of good it did us. We did find out that the transmitter's on the Ehrenfeld. I, I understand your feelings. No, you don't. You took one hell of a risk for next to nothing. Whoever Trompetter's number two man is took over immediately. We still haven't been able to break the code. While you were on the train for two days coming back to Delhi, three more ships have been sunk. Did you hear what I said? Three more ships have been sunk. I'd like to go into that harbor with commandos and blow the whole filthy place up, but we can't, which is rather frustrating. Also, I've got no suggestions which may account for my unpleasant disposition. If the professionals can't do it, we might have to turn to amateurs. And what does that mean? What if a group of British civilians managed to board their infells? If they were caught, might be taken as a drunken escapade, you know. Businessmen on holiday in Goa without their wives, having a smashing good time. Little Chauncey with the Portuguese government. That's a masterpiece of understatement. London would have our heads. It might just succeed, sir. No. Oh. And which civilians did you have in mind? The Calcutta Light Horse, sir. <laughs> the what? It's a part-time territorial unit. They haven't seen action for 40 years. Lewis, you're talking about a mixed bag of boozing, middle-aged, pot-bellied businessmen. No argument. But when the war started, every man jack of them volunteered for active service. Those that were not accepted for whatever reasons are all ex-soldiers. They know weapons, they know tactics. They'd give their right arms to help. It's insane, Lewis, and you know it. Put together a plan and let's see it. Thank you, sir.